many flights do you got? Over 100. 120? Yeah. Seven? I'd, I'd say like 110 probably. Flying an extra small. How many flights did you get, Jason? 127 and a half. 127? Yeah. And a half. Yeah. <laughs> 127, dude. That's jamming. That's jamming. That's freaking awesome, man. And on to a two extra small. Two extra, two extra so, small. Yeah, you did great, buddy. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. That's the way it's supposed to work. We don't give a crap about first flights. We care about the hundredth flight. <laughs> That's where it actually does something. Yeah, imagine if you were done after your first flight. You wouldn't know Jack. It's like, that ain't training. <laughs> or even if you had three or four. I mean, think about where you'd be in three or four flights or even 10. It's yeah, yeah, nothing compared to 127. Which is not even comparable. Just whole different world of confidence and ability and precision. And Todd Idol. Lean a little left, slowly, smoothly. Hold left, hold left, hold left, hold left. And break, stop, hands up brakes all of it all of it all the hard as you can hard as you can run run stand up straight stand up straight stop punching brakes brakes full throttle full throttle lean backwards lean backwards brake and brake right hand up right hand up left try oh man that'd be an a plus perfect you needed just a touch more weight shift how many flights did you end up getting 170 Six. What's the smallest glider you got down to? 14 square meters. Yeah, 14, <laughs> baby. I don't want to. You end up with Lee Super Lee. Uh, I got 530 flights and went all the way down to the 4XS. You literally see super students getting over a hundred flights, hundreds of flights, up to 530 flights. Um, that's. The whole point of training is to gain massive experience and the skill that goes with proper training and massive experience. So you can see why I drive 1,500 miles from Utah to the perfect location to train at a huge wide open beach where you can get massive hours of experience and hundreds of flights uh, on top of that. It's huge. How are you gonna get 25 to 60 hours of glider control if you're in a field in Ohio or some, you know, dirt, rocky, yucky field out, you know, <laughs> you know, in the middle of Joe Blow, you're not gonna be able to get it. You might be able to train for 45 minutes here and there every fifth day between the weather, but seriously, ask anyone who's tried to train anywhere. They go and it's like, oh, we can't train. Oh, there's too much wind. Oh, there's this. And you're not training. And then you watch a super training. Like the very last class, we trained 11 days out of 11 days. Literally all 11 days we trained. That's why we go to that location. Um, the location is so critical because it is physically impossible to get 25 to 60 hours of glider control in one class in the wrong location. It's not possible. Use logic and reason and think about how critical that location is. If you go to a beach in Virginia, it doesn't work. I've been there. <laughs> I've been all up and down the coast. I've literally drove the entire circumference of Florida looking for beaches, looking for training sites. I have been all the way around the entire coast of basically Mexico and the United States and all over other countries. I have trained all over the world and the location you train is so critical even if you live in florida you should hop on a plane and fly to super training look at the result okay people can say we got the best training that's great i love it when people say they're the best because then it's really easy to either prove it's correct or prove they're totally full of crap and if somebody says they're the best it should be based on the skill of the students are the students getting hundreds of flights are they dropping glider sizes, proving that their skills are progressing? Because if you try and put somebody who doesn't have the right skills on an extra, extra small, they're gonna oscillate wildly and it's gonna be really butt ugly and they're going to end up with a really bad day. So you just don't see that at other schools because you don't develop any skills at other schools. Listen to what I'm saying. This is a huge thing and how you verify it 
is very simple. Let's see any other training videos where students are dropping glider size after glider size after glider size like you see at super training that's what happens as your skills progress you can drop to smaller glider sizes which i have many other videos of why it's so critical to get down to those smaller sizes so that you have a much wider range of weather conditions that you can fly in and aren't stuck in a very small narrow window of which you can fly you'll hear other people say oh yeah, yeah you can't fly during the day and oh yeah you can't fly in anything but you know really light winds what <laughs> when you have super training and proper gear you can pretty much fly whenever the freak you want in anything but bad weather and you can even fly in bad weather but it wouldn't be much fun and would be a bad day so it's about the results of training you have to be a little smarter than the average bear <laughs> to do your research and look at which paramotor training is actually the best. So the best is the one producing the results. Show me a video, prove me wrong, please prove me wrong. Show me a video of any other school where students are getting over a hundred flights regularly, very commonly. Let's see any other school producing students like that and at the same time dropping glider size after glider size which demonstrates the progress of skill and that's after 25 to 60 hours of glider control where they can literally kite on a fence <laughs> and kite on one foot and sit there and perfectly balance the angle of their body and the altitude of their body give or take one inch using the glider because if you can't do that you can't do the hundreds of flights. It just doesn't work because you don't have the control because that loading control and glider control then results into uh, basically stability control in your glider. If you try and launch hundreds of times and get hundreds of flights, and you don't have that sensitivity to glider control, you're just gonna take collapses and gift wrap your glider and shred it in the motor, and it's gonna be catastrophic and a total nightmare. So that glider control is everything. Master the glider control, 25 to 60 hours takes the perfect location and the best training in the world, and then hundreds of flights on top of it, again, it's the best training in the world. There is no ifs, ands, and buts. There's no maybe. There's no opinion to which training is the best. The best training produces the best results. Use your head, be smart, look for the training that has the best results. That's super training. Feel free to prove me wrong. Let's see the video as I say every time. And of course, nobody can ever produce a video because I'm not wrong. Super training is the best training in the world, which means it doesn't matter where you are in the world. It makes sense. It's worth every penny. It's worth a plane flight to take super training. I mean, imagine going somewhere else and you get an hour of kiting and one flight. Seriously. Was that worth saving the price of a plane ticket? No, come on, be serious. Uh, real training is worth your life. It's worth a heck of a lot more than a plane ticket to the perfect location. So do it right, be smart, do the research, but base it on the results, the skills that are actually being produced and the experience students are actually gaining. Let's go flying, but do it the right way.